Nigerians. President Bola Tinubu has ordered the full implementation of the Stephen R. report. The 800-page report recommended that 263 of the statutory agencies be reduced to 161, 38 agencies be scrapped, 52 be merged, and 14 be reverted to departments in various ministries, all aimed at cutting the cost of governance. TVC News correspondent Ayodele Ozuwaku examines the recommendations of this report. We cannot continue to lag behind. In 2012, the administration of President Goodluck Jonathan set up the Presidential Committee on the rationalization and restructuring of federal parasitals, commissions, and agencies. The committee was headed by a retired civil servant and former head of service of the Federation, Stephen Rossoy. And then there were statements that were subject. The committee recommended the scrapping and merging of 220 out of the 541 statutory and non-statutory agencies. The 800-page reports of the committee noted that the functions of most government parasitals and agencies are overlapping. Of the original total contracts. As such, the committee in its report submitted in 2012 recommended the reduction of statutory government agencies from 263 to 161. in the global ICT age. As part of its recommendation, the committee suggested abolishment of 38 agencies, merger of 52, and reversion of 12 to departments yes. within the ministries. Why there should be large differentials in salary. In 2014, the committee on the white paper of the Oracle report submitted its own report. 12 years after the recommendations were made, two review committees, the federal government is set to implement the recommendations. President Tinobu ordered the implementation of the Orosoye report at the Federal Executive Council meeting on the Monday, 26th of February. According to the plan, numerous agencies will be scrapped, others combined or restructured to cut rising costs of governance. So it's a report that has been that have been in place for almost a decade, if not more than. And uh, the motive is to, I mean, was to streamline uh, government expenditure, most especially in the, in the area of uh, cost and uh, carrying out uh, the responsibilities of uh, government parasitals and agencies. Uh, going by what this government stands for, which is uh, prudence, accountability, and you know, uh, transparency in governance, it is important that the president, you know, assess and probably set up a committee to look into how they can see a way of implementing, if not all the report, at least a, a good part of the report, so that. Uh, you know, Nigeria can move forward from there. The government assured workers that that would not affect jobs. To demonstrate its resolve, the administration has considered a committee to implement the report within 12 weeks. The committee will be headed by the secretary to the government of the Federation, Judge Akume. The National Assembly is expected to play a crucial role in the implementation of the report as a legal framework or enabling act of some of the agencies need to be amended. I deal with work. CBC News, Abuja. Well, joining us in the studio to discuss this development is a UK solicitor and public affairs analyst, Lufemi Aino. Good morning. Yes, Thank you for morning. joining us. Yes, good morning. Thank you. <laughs> now, the question on the lips of a majority of persons is if we are finally on our way to breaking this jinx of the Orson Year report, yeah. uh, because uh, this is not the first time we are on this path. Mm -hmm. Recall that former President Kulog Jonathan also talked about, you know, implementation of this report. Mm -hmm. They came up with a white paper. Uh, former President Buhari also came up with a white paper to also addressing the implementation of this report. Mm -hmm. Now we are here. Are we on our way? to fully implementing this. Yes, that's what they call deja vu. That mm -hmm. means we've been there, we've been there before. And, um, well, if the political will is there, definitely the implementation will happen. Mm -hmm. And it is very important to state that, you see, a modernized civil service is an essential part of democracy. Absolutely. And the reason being, politicians, before getting to power, we make promise and promises that we will do this and this. Some of those promises cannot, will not be fulfilled in a million years. And those who that will be fulfilled, or they're going to implement, let's use that word. The civil service is very essential when it comes to implementation. 
And if you listen to some of these governors, they will tell you that, look, uh, whatever we get from federation accounts, we, once we pay the civil service, there is nothing left. left. There is nothing left. That has been the complaint all along. So it is very essential to have a lean civil service that is efficient, that is productive, and that we deliver outstanding public service. And the only way, part of the ways in which you can achieve that, training is very essential. At the same time, rationalization, margin, which we are talking about, is also essential. But my own concern is this. And that is the question we need to ask. Mm. Has there been a cost-benefit analysis regarding the implementation? Number one, the media report is that, look, if they implement the RSIA report, they are going to save, it will lead to a saving about 860-something billion naira mm. per annum. Mm. That's a substantial amount of money which the government can use to implement other projects. And now that we are in a trying period, whereby the government is giving, um, you now have a government that is gradually turning Nigeria into a wealthier state, that once we have a problem, government will come and say, look, we are going to give you 25,000, we are going to give you 10,000. The question is, where will that money come from? Mm. So if we have this major and uh, rationalization, and we can save a substantial amount of money, that will help. But I have a concern. And that concern is this. Number one, you work here. In your contract of employment, there is something they call mobility clause. Number one, if the mobility clause is not there, you are in Lagos now. Tomorrow, the employer can tell you go to Abuja. But the question remains, is there a mobility clause in your contract of employment whereby they can deploy you to somewhere else? Now, some of these civil... If you have the major, the acquisition, or what have you, the, sorry, which we are talking, the rationalization, <laughs> sorry, that we are talking about, the question remains. Yeah. Some people are going to be surplus to requirement. Mm. And when people become surplus to requirement, what lawyers call it is, what will happen is redundancy. Okay? Now, let me, tell you, let, let me simplify it. Now, they are going to merge ICPC with EFCC, mm. and it will be one commission. Now, the EFCC, they have their own accountant. The ICPC, they have their own accountant, as we speak. If you match the two together, does that mean we are still going to have two accountants doing the same job for that commission? So what will happen? One will have to go. Mm. Now, if care is not taken, the one that, has to, that we have to let off is likely to take legal action against us because if we don't approach it with care. Now, the government needs to think carefully that if you carry out margin ministries, scrapping some agencies, how are we going to compensate these people? Because what you are doing, technically by law, it's a breach of their contract mm. because you are the one who come. You see, if, if at the end of the day somebody decides that TFC will join another television organization, that's not your fault. No. That is management decision. decision, and somebody needs to compensate you. So we need to work out that. Look, are we going to compensate people who are going to lose their job? Number one, those who are going to go on secondment, is it in their contract of employment? We need to think about that, too. And at the same time, we're not saying there's nothing wrong. If you have a lean civil service that is very effective, that is very productive, but at the same time, that modernization must take account of the fact that, look, there's a legal implication for what we are going to do. And I must say this to you. If care is not taken, the people that will be let off, a lot of them are going to go to court. Money are going to be spent defending all these cases in court. But if you have a good formula, take for instance, if you are going to make them redundant, because number one, the job is no longer there. We have scrapped the agencies. One, you need to apply a formula. Are we going to use first in, first out, or last in, first out? 
That is one, because if your selection is not. Number two, you need to have a discussion with your union mm. so that you don't create another problem. So the consultation is very important. You can come out and say, look, we are going to implement a Rosario report, this and that, we need a lean civil service. There's nothing wrong with that. But consultation is very essential as well. Okay. Otherwise, if you are not careful, you will get overwhelmed with unnecessary legal cases. Oh, okay, I'm tempted to continue this yeah, point yes. with you, mm -hmm. but um, so, but okay, let's let's put that on a hold. There is even a concern that a 12-year-old report as this is it still relevant for our time, and you know, will that should that form part of the consultations that the president has ordered uh, at this uh, at this time now, because the the agencies have more than, is it tripled now, 1,300 well, yes. uh, and, and all of that. But what do you think? Yes, my thinking is that even though, you know, there's something which is even concerning. Number one, we have President Inubu saying, look, well, I'm going to implement a Rosario report. Then you have the same President Inubu creating a ministry for blue economy at the same time. So increasing the number of ministries right. at the same time. So you see, right. then that, the Dr. Thomases will go to town and say, look, I don't think this president have that political will to do it. But the most important is that part of that consultation, the reason why that is very essential is that, you see, for every action, you should expect a reaction. And at the same time, if things are not well managed, things can spiral out of control. Mm. And it is very essential. This, you see, when they came up with the integrated uh, payment system, yeah, they managed yeah, yeah. to limit uh, the number of the civil service as of today. They are about 720,000. So the government can come and say, look, we are going to cap this and make sure that the civil service of the federation, they are not more than 500. So that would be a substantial thing. That is one. Then number two, the recruitment methods too. We need to look at it. Number one, I'm not saying we don't, we don't need a civil service that can attract the best talent. Number, even where I've been and where I come from, they have uh, what they call graduate fast stream route, whereby they go into the university, recruit the best students, and to join the civil service, and from there they come from level so, 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 and they move forward. And these people, when it comes to efficiency, you will give them credit. So this is something we need to, to think about. And in this trying time, where Nigerians are going through bread and water, it is very essential. You have civil servants who are going to deliver promptly because, number one, people are very impatient. And number two, people are really getting fed up with one or two policies of this government. So if we can implement and i do take your point and i've heard people saying it is outdated yeah. 12 years down the line this and that and what have you well that is one side of the argument but the other side of the argument is that let us look at the substance in that report, report. let's forget about leave the time let's look at the substance in that report and if you look at this report if we implement it and we are going to end up saving about 860 billion naira. That is very substantial. That is very important, especially now that the government is giving do, uh, uh, doling out money here, left, right, and center. And I've said this, and it's not limited to the civil service again, because the essence of this is to, cost the, uh, to reduce the cost of governance. Yes. So definitely, it is very essential for the president himself to look inward. The number of political appointees, we need to consider that as well. Mm. Because, you see, we have to be very careful of duplication of work. And if you duplicate work, what you will get in your organization is people just coming in and they gossip, and when it is 2 o'clock, they leave. Mm. And you know in some organizations, there are some people they don't work. Mm. They just move from desk to desk by gossiping, disturbing those who are going to do the work. So it is very essential we consider that, that these political appointees, do we need them? Nigeria is not America where you have Secretary of State, then you have Under Secretary of State. And by the time you look at the job they are all doing, they are still doing the same okay. jobs. So we need to be very careful and consider whether some of these political appointees 
They are really necessary. Mm -hmm. You have somebody who is the chief of staff to the president. You have the secretary to the government of the federation. Is it not possible for the secretary? What does the chief of staff to the president do? It's just to facilitate people coming to see the president. He doesn't engage in any policy implementation. Mm -hmm. So the secretary to the state government can still handle that. That will give us a substantial money. And then you now have for that people who say they are special advisor on technology, they are special advisor on video, they are special. What is all that? And mm -hmm. so, you see, we need to be very careful. Right. And in this trying time, when the government is trying to deal with unemployment issue, these people, when you might, you scrap, these people are going to the labor market. Mm -hmm. So definitely, Security. we either needs to consider whether we need to retrain them, oh. number two, because some of these people, these are people who have been in government. Yeah, because as a civil there are those years. who are concerned that they might constitute uh, some other security issues yeah, yeah. with regards to or they being laid off. Even the government has said that um, nobody will lose their job as mm -hmm. it is. But when uh, you look at um, the past administration's reasons for not being able to implement the report, mm -hmm. according to reports that we read, is that um, the National Assembly's body language at the time mm -hmm. showed that they were not prepared, you know, because they are crucial with regards to the implementation of this report. And uh, I'm wondering what you see with regards to them, this the National Assembly this time around, knowing that uh, they work hand in glove with the current administration, yeah. if they will be ready to actually go ahead and move to implement this report. Well, you have even, you have even answered the question. Really? By saying they work hand in glove <laughs> with this present <laughs> government. So definitely, now that there is a good relationship between the National Assembly and the executive, I think there is a possibility mm. that they're going to toe the line one way or the other. But at the same time, it's not impossible for there to be certain concern that how this is. The government is saying people are not going to be laid off. I don't believe that. Because at the end of the day, do you just want people who are hanging around? Is it the case that even in some organization, if we don't want you, you close today, by the time you come tomorrow, we have rearranged the office and your desk will disappear. Right. So if you come and you said, oh, where am I going to sit? Well, if you don't get a seat, you have to go home. Mm -hmm. That is the, that's the only thing. Mm -hmm. So do you want these people? Do you want two people doing the same the job? Because you see, this Nigerian civil service, I must say this to you, they work in this anachronistic fashion. And if you go to some of those ministries, you will see that, especially on a Friday, they are not even there. By the time you get there at 2 o'clock, all of them have disappeared. They come back on Monday morning, then the discussion will be what happened at that party you attended on Saturday, blah, blah, blah. And then you mm. see them carry fight. Some of the fights, look, they are so big. And you, it's very concerning. Uh, it's, your file is still with the PS. Your file is with the HEO. And now, in these modern processes. times, yeah. why can't you embrace technology? Right. You understand me? Because, you see, the civil service in the United Kingdom, most of them, what they are doing now is a paperless office, mm. whereby you work here. You can use the intranet to communicate with Kemi. Yeah. That look, oh, this, if you get a memo, then you tell them, look, send me an email, I will forward it. So we can you trail the communication if there is any need. But here, you will see, if you look at the back of the file, you see red pen, blue pen, uh, everybody, okay. minute. Mm -hmm. Then by the time you get the letter, they say, assuring you of the highest regard of the <laughs> minister. What, should be, what is the lowest regard of the minister? So you see, that communication system mm. has to be very effective. Right. You see, any system, whether media, large organization, the system needs to be effective to be respected. Absolutely. And the only way you can do that is to make sure there is what you call joint thinking, and people are drinking from the same mug. Mm. Now, if people are expressing concern that, look, if you implement this report, there will be insecurity, there will be... But you see, the best talent, you can retain them. The surplus, you tell them to go. Because you too, you want to be happy to make sure you are working for your money. You understand me? Because some people go to work, they leave home, they say they are going to work, but they don't work. 
Mm. By the time they come home and they say, oh, madam, how work? They say, oh, we do them. What are you doing? <laughs> because at the end of the day, somebody's going, look, um, in some law firm on Friday, you have to go to and meet your senior partner and give your time shift mm. to say that this is the number of billable hours you've been able to achieve in a week. If they monitor you for one month, and you are not billing enough, they tell you to go. There right. is no point to wasting time. So it is very important. We ensure that we have a lean civil service that is very effective, that can deliver that outstanding public service, whereby when you go into the ministry, and they need to try as much as possible to embrace technology. And I must say this to you. Look, even though I'm in Nigeria, if I need anything, from the home office in London. I know I can go on their website. All the forms, necessary forms are there. Look, I was communicating with one university just last week. Now, this will make you laugh on behalf of a client. But on their website, they have the email of everybody, whether you want to communicate with the director of studies, business admin, pharmacology, what have you. All the emails, they are there. So it is important that we embrace that technology whereby people, the public can get information without much ado. And what this government is doing, some of them, the ideas are very good. Okay, we will give you money, we will use your BVN, we will use your NIN. But I can tell you, as a politician, that if you go into some rural areas, there are some people there, they don't even have a BVN. Mm. They have never heard of NIN. So why are we going to reach out to these people? So that implementation, they need to look at it critically. And this committee, which has been set up, needs to get the ball rolling as soon as practically possible. But, but, but by and large, sorry to disturb right. the flow of thought, by and large, they need to consider the cost-benefit analysis of right. this. Right, because the earlier point you made about um, the, the lawsuits that this move might incur on the part of the government, mm. We know some people may also want to, to latch onto that, but isn't there a, a buffer somewhat for the federal government, seeing as this is the path that we have always, you know, longed for? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you know, the, if people feel aggrieved as a result of being asked to go uh, due to this directive, mm -hmm. is, there a, is there some form of a soft landing for, for federal government, or there is no other way out? than to pay for well, compensation. You, you see, that soft land, they apply both ways. At the end of the day, you are the one who wants to make them redundant. They have not done anything. There and is it no wasn't misconduct. foreseen. It, mm. Yes, it wasn't foreseen. But nobody is going to say, look, organization is never static, OK? Because as time goes by, some people, management can come up with new ideas. They can come up with this. And because of that, OK, take for instance, if you work in an organization, whereby the only way you've been communicating is to write memo. And the management now decide that, look, we've made enough profit. We are going to buy this computer, or we are going to use a robot because we don't need you again. Are you now going to say they shouldn't do that? In which case, your job will go. So what they need, the soft landing there, is to make sure there is proper consultation. You see, variation of people's contract of employment cannot be unilateral. It has to be mutual. Mm -hmm. You work here. If I want to reduce your hours, I can't just write you and say, uh, internal memo, dear Vero, your hour is now taken. That will be a breach of your contract. Mm. But it has to be mutual variation. Then I will sit down and I will tell you, this is the reason why we are doing this. You may even say, OK, you are happy with it. That means it's a mutual variation. Mm. And if the government is going to scrap all this ministry, they want to match some, there is the it is necessary for them to consult with those individuals. And the way we can do it is twofold. There is something in, a, uh, in the law of employment you call compromise agreement. Mm. That compromise agreement happens, especially civils in the civil service. They use it a lot especially in a situation like this or a year report, mm -hmm. whereby people job will disappear, some will be plus to requirement. So you give them what they call a compromise agreement, that look, we have look at your contract. These are what you'll be entitled to. Number one, you can give a severance payment yes. to some, yes. whereby 
you only have two, three years before your retirement. Mm. We will pay you the three years, mm. and then you go. go. That is severance payment. Mm. Then there are some we will say, look, you know, you've been with us for three years. Now we have this ugly situation whereby one, most of the one of our major clients has said they, are not, they don't have the budget this year. So because of that, we need to carry out certain reorganization. But what we are going to do, we've taken up account of the number of years you've worked with us. Mm -hmm. We have looked at your contract, the notice period in the contract, we will pay you. But because we are breaching your contract, we will give you about three million take as an extra yeah. to take. And also we will organize a retraining for you in case you want to start your own business using that three million. Because these are people who have been used to pen and paper over the years. Mm. If you throw them into the labor market. So once you have done that, the court will not look. You've done everything possible. Mm. And you can use that to reduce litigation. Because some people will be happy that, you know, this money will go. I even have a saving of $3 million already. Mm. So if I join the two. But make sure that payment gets to them promptly. Okay. And then if you need a reference mm. in Fusho, you can give what is called factual reference without saying this person work with this, then you attach it to the compromise agreement, both of you, you sign. That's the soft landing. Mm. No case. Because if this is not well handled, I'm telling you, there will be a lot of cases. And the money they claim they are going to save is going to end up to be a disproportionate cost. Right. So much, so much has been said, and I believe that... Um, that uh, those who need to take notes have taken notes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you so much, uh, UK solicitor and public affairs analyst, for your time on the yes, program. Yes, thank you for Thank you time. so much. Yes, thank you. We're still ahead on Tuesday breakfast. Cardiovascular disease in adults have claimed the lives of many and caused uh, disability for some. That's the focus of our conversation.